I would uh, like to point out that uh, I am batting a thousand so far. The 130 briefing is occurring at 130. So I've done all of mine on time. I have a couple of uh, announcements. First of all, I'd like to remind you that the Secretary is uh, touring Strategic Command Headquarters at Offutt Air Force Base, and at 2 p.m. our time, he will do meet with the media at the Officers Club there. That audio portion of that uh, news media event will occur, or will be uh, on Channel 13. We'll be going to Los Angeles, California tonight, and we'll have another media availability pipe back on Channel 13 at 6.30 our time. And I'll have the duty officer come around to check to see who's still here. Uh, I'd also like to uh, welcome five government spokespersons from the uh, country of Haiti. Uh, they're here as uh, part of the USIA International Visitors Program, and I'll be meeting with you, uh, I think, about 2.30. I'll be more than happy to talk to you, but welcome. And with uh, that, I'll take your questions. Sir. Uh, State Department officials seem to be indicating or seem to be softening their stand on whether or not U.S. forces will, in fact, go out. I think, that, uh, first of all, I don't think there's any difference at all in our particular positions. Uh, we have committed to staying until June of 98, and I think what you're hearing from both State Department and the White House, and if you're listening from DOD as well, is that we need to start concentrating on what it is we are doing now as opposed to uh, looking at the end of a mission. We need to be spending the next uh, 12 to 13 months trying to bring peace to Bosnia and working with the civilians so that uh, peace does break out when we do leave. And I don't see any difference in uh, opinion or policy uh, within the government on that particular issue. Well, Mr. Jeffrey said that repeatedly. In fact, he said recently that, that the United States should be concentrating on what needs to be done now, but he's also made very clear that it's his position that U.S. troops should be out by the end of next June. Uh, is that still his position? That is still his position. Is that and still I, the position of the United States under the State Department and the White House? I know of no change to that policy. Tell us about the situation in Sierra Leone. Um, has an evacuation begun? When will it begin, et cetera? The uh, Kearsarge has arrived off the coast of Sierra Leone. Uh, we have sent a four-person uh, uh, advanced command element uh, to the embassy. Uh, they are currently uh, coordinating uh, an evacuation that will uh, begin tomorrow. There are about 250 Americans, 250 to 300 uh, Americans uh, that we anticipate will want to come out, and we anticipate beginning the operation tomorrow and completing it tomorrow. That will be a call that will be made on the ground by the charge uh, at the embassy, as well as on-scene commanders. Uh, we'll take into account whether there's danger to these people, uh, agreements that we have with various countries and such things, uh, or even a humanitarian basis. We're not going to put people in harm's way. If it's practical to remove them, we will do so on a space-available basis, with priority being given to American citizens. They will be moved to the uh, Kearsarge, where they will remain for a day or two, and then moved on to a transfer point. Not designated yet. Transfer, transfer point is uh, Conakry, Guinea, which is about 100 miles from Freetown. Conakry is C-O-N-A-K-R-Y. How far from Freetown? About 100 miles. About 100 miles uh, west-northwest. And the commercial... Uh, Air traffic in and out of there, or are you arranging for a special airlift to get them? Uh, the State Department, as I understand it, is arranging for charter aircraft to take them from Conakry back to the United States or wherever else. What is the situation on the ground? Has it <coughs> deteriorated significantly um, in the last day or so uh, that is making this necessary? The situation, as it's been described to me, is uh, uncertain. Uh, not, it's not stable at all. There's sporadic gunfire. Uh, it's good deal of doubt about who's in charge. And uh, when the State Department asked us to conduct this uh, non-combatant evacuation order, uh, we moved the Kearsarge up to uh, the vicinity, and we're now prepared to execute that particular NEO. 
Can you could describe the group of Americans, uh, <clears throat> diplomatic employees, children, what, who's involved in that? Uh, no, uh, I can't. Uh, there's, a, there's about 250 out of the roughly 400 that will uh, allegedly want to leave. I'm assuming that the 150 are people who have other commitments uh, that wish to remain. I, I don't know the exact uh, makeup of the group. The ambassador from uh, Sierra Leone has uh, asked the United States to intervene militarily to bring an end to the, uh, to the coup there. Has that request reached this building? Is there any response to that request? No such request has reached this building. And is that something the Pentagon would uh, likely favor doing, uh, intervening in this civil war? The policy for that would have to come from the State Department. Uh, we execute policy. We don't set it. Well, will the Kearsarge be remaining in the area after these folks are evacuated for any possible uh, contingency, or will it be going off to back the to The intent, bed? once it was released from the coast uh, off of the Congo, Republic of the Congo, as it's now called, was to send it into the Mediterranean. So it, it is sort of wending its way to the Mediterranean en route. Uh, it will probably be, it will remain in the area for at least one or two days until the uh, Americans that are taken on board can be transferred to uh, Conakry. But they, then it would go on to the mayor. If that was the original plan, I mean, plans change. David? There, uh, any other forces that are on route to the area? Any other forces that have been put on alert to or given warning orders to uh, go to the area? Not that I'm aware of. I think the uh, with what the assets they have aboard the uh, Kearsarge are quite sufficient to do this particular mission. There are hundreds of troops from uh, Nigeria that have flowed into the country in the last two days. Um, is that a good sign in the view of the United States, or is that not necessarily a good sign? The Nigerian forces, are about 1,500, uh, we estimate, that are now in the country, have gone in with the express stated purpose of securing government installations. Um, we know of, uh, at this point, that's exactly what they're doing. Uh, so any sort of stability that they can lend to the situation, we would uh, look upon favorably. Um, can you uh, describe what the Special Forces currently in Freetown are doing? Uh, there is an 11-man uh, Special Forces detachment from the 3rd Special Forces Group at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, that was in Sierra Leone at the time the coup went down. Uh, they were there with uh, some British uh, military instructors conducting uh, leadership skills training for the Sierra Leone military. Uh, when the coup broke out, uh, they sort of withdrew to the area of the embassy, and they are currently uh, assisting as they can at the embassy there in Freetown. Providing security protection, communication. I don't have precisely what they're doing, but security, uh, any a special forces group like that, 11-man team, can do an awful lot of things. And so they can provide a lot of support. It's not just security. Is yeah. there any intention to shut the embassy down, or will there remain a skeleton crew on? That'd make a, that's a great question for the State Department. Evacuation. Well, you have, so you're not, you're not evacuating everyone. We have, we have not received any requests for additional security for the embassy that I know of. Is the ship 20 miles offshore? Typically, in an operation of this nature, the ship would be over the horizon, uh, out of view from the shoreline, and that distance is about 20 miles. It's on station now in terms of the helicopter range. That is correct. It is on station. They arrived on station uh, this morning in the early hours. Is the, uh, is the gunfire that's been reported in the immediate vicinity of the embassy, has any of it been? Uh, it's, uh, the the sensing I have is sporadic gunfire in Freetown. Jacob said the other day that the U.S. citizens didn't appear to be in any danger or be the target of, uh, of any hostility. Has that changed at all? We're not aware that there's a direct threat to American citizens other than the fact the uncertain situation, the randomness of the gunfire could put American citizens at risk. Uh, top priority, one of, the, one of our national interests is the protection of American citizens overseas. And that's precisely what we're there to, to do, is to protect them and assist them in uh, leaving the country. Have U.S. citizens uh, been coming to the embassy looking for shelter, protection, and a way out? I don't have an answer to that question. I mean, that would be another question, perhaps, for the State Department. But they will have to assemble in Freetown uh, to uh, 
be picked up by the helicopters. So, I mean, there's communications uh, being issued right now to American citizens in Sierra Leone. That any uh, Americans are out in the uh, hinterlands anywhere that might not be able to get to Freetown? I don't have an answer to that. Bill. Oh, can we say this for a second? Go ahead, Joe. How are you getting the word out to uh, Americans who may want to leave? Uh, yeah, that again is a State Department function. Uh, from what I understand, they are uh, initiating a typical uh, notification system, and I understand they may also be using a Voice of America to try to get the word out. But uh, again, please ask the State Department that question. Okay, new topic. Another topic now. Uh, you know, we'll go there, sure, but in a minute. Uh, can you respond to the uh, reports that uh, uh, General Ralston will be uh, become the, the uh, chairman of the Joint Chiefs and uh, that the announcement will be sometime this week? Are there any comments? The Secretary of Defense has not made a final decision with regard to a recommendation to the President for the next Chairman of the Joint Chiefs. Uh, he will not likely make any sort of recommendation to the President and has not discussed it with the President uh, any time within the next, so say, about one or two weeks, perhaps, would be the earliest that he would make any sort of recommendation to the President. Oh, so uh, there will be no announcement until that is done? That's correct. That's an erroneous story. The Erroneous is, is one way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> Premature is another way to put it. What is the department's response to Senator uh, Grassley's charge that Comptroller Hamry has not been following the law and the way he's been paying <coughs> disbursements to contractors? Senator Grassley is, is concerned with a process that has been in place in the Defense Department with regard to paying contractors for over about a decade, as I understand it. Um, I think uh, Senator Grassley and Dr. Hamry do have some common ground here. I think they both understand that there's a problem, and I think they both want to fix it. I think the true issue is probably the speed at which it's going to get fixed. Uh, the Secretary of Defense is quite... Uh, uh, happy with what uh, Dr. Hamry is doing in this regard. Uh, obviously, Senator Grassley is not as happy, but uh, I mean, Dr. Hamry has done quite a bit of, uh, uh, or quite a number of things to try to rectify this problem and fix it. And uh, I believe we're moving along a path that will bring us to standard auditing practices uh, within the Department of Defense that will match that of civilian industry. Just on that point, uh, the true issue is the speed which it gets fixed. Earlier this year, the Pentagon proposed legislation to, in effect, authorize the practice. And that, that legislation was withdrawn. Now, is there a thought to reintroduce that legislation, or is there another avenue when you say fixing? How are you going to fix it? I am not an expert in the comptroller area, uh, but what I understand is that uh, the issue is giving Congress reports and audits that it asked for in a timely manner that match up with the same sort of standards and the same sort of clarity that civilian industry uh, provides its uh, shareholders. That's that type of thing that we're striving for, a matter of simplifying the process, updating it, automating it, and fixing it so that we can achieve that same sort of accountability. Well, maybe I don't I'm know about the legislation, George. Well, the grassy charge isn't what you just described. It's that. Uh, the controller's been paying one contractor and putting on the books that he actually paid another and then making up the payments to match the actual recipient later on. That, that's the issue that Grassley raised, not clarity of reports to Congress. Well, yes, but in, and also we are, we are addressing that particular issue. I mean, it is not as if... Uh, you know, we are doing a variety of things to try to fix that issue, among other issues, with regard to the efficiency of uh, the finances, uh, managing the finances within the Pentagon. Um, I believe that's included in that. I'm not answering that well enough for you. I'll Suzanne. The subject. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. I'm getting kind of in depth here. You certainly are. On the Ralston issue for a second, do you know, has uh, General Shali Kashvili made a recommendation to the Secretary of Defense yet? 
uh, General Charlie Kashvili, as the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, is, is a primary advisor to the Secretary of Defense as well as the President of the United States. Uh, however, what advice he has provided to either of those individuals, uh, I was certainly not privy to. I wasn't asking what it was. I'm just asking whether he has any. Advice. I do not know. Change the subject. Um, there's a report in Japan, I believe Kyoto is saying that, quoting U.S. officials, is saying that the North Koreans have indicated that they are prepared to resume talks with the United States on possible four-way peace talks uh, on, on the Korean Peninsula. Do you have anything on that? Or whether or not the North Koreans are have indicated that they're willing to resume these negotiations over four-way peace talks? I have nothing on that. I, I can assure you that we would certainly welcome any movement towards a final settlement on that uh, peninsula. So it's uh, it would be welcome, but I am not aware of anything. State, I can take the question, but it may also be more appropriate for the State Department. Do you have anything yeah. on this uh, biochem unit going down to New Orleans Airport to pick up a cylinder suspected of carrying noxious gas? I understand they're going down there to pick it up. Uh, I. And the Army has got uh, more information on that than, uh, than I bothered to read. So if you want to contact them and find out more about that particular unit and what they're doing and how they work and that sort of thing, I, I would refer you down there to get the accurate information. I'm aware that they're going down there to pick it up. Uh, does the, uh, the Department of Defense uh, share a uh, concern uh, that many share that, that uh, Loren Kabila is establishing a military dictatorship based on what he has done since he's uh, taken over in Kinshasa? I'm sure the State Department would be more than happy to answer that question for you. Well, but, the, but the military must have a concern if this guy is a military leader and he's not allowing any freedoms or dissent or, or the like. Is that not a concern? For the security of Africa? It's a peripheral concern to the military, but we execute policy. We don't set it. And I would suggest that the State Department would be the appropriate place to go for an answer to that question. Thank you. Thank you. One more? Yes, one more. Uh, yeah. I was just beginning to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to stop that. No, stop now. <laughs> yeah, according to yesterday's New York Times, the two members of the House Judicial Committee has asked the Justice Department the investigation of the uh, 94's decisions on the loosening of export controls on sensitive American technology to uh, Chinese. So, what is current DOD's position on the 94's decision? Uh, I may have to see both you and George Wilson after this briefing. Uh, other than telling you that our policy with China is a policy of engagement, I'm not sure I'm prepared to go beyond that. I, I think I know where you're talking, and I can tell you that. Uh, if you'll check with Queenie Byers in my office, she might have something for you on that particular issue. Lieutenant Colonel Queenie Byers. It doesn't sound like the Pentagon support the 94th decision. I, I'm not really aware of what you're referring to. Is there Thank information you. On, on, on the uh, Joint, Joint Chiefs Chairmanship appointment. Will the Vice Chairman uh, be appointed at the same time? Do you have any input on that? No, George, I don't. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Very good. You awarded all those to